Hey there, and welcome back to XCOM. My name is Pete, and today we finally complete the first in-game month in our XCOM Enemy Within Iron Man Impossible walkthrough. After we completed our very first mission for the XCOM Council in the last episode, we now have 14 days left on the calendar in March, but we will only run into one more mission and can then scan ahead to the end of the month and to our very first Council report. Shortly after we start scanning, we receive our first council request. At some point in the next 20 days, Russia would like us to send over two scopes and they will reward us with four engineers. At the moment, we don't have the money for this, but scopes are very cheap to produce, so we should have no issues fulfilling the request soon. The reward is of course fantastic as well, especially in the early game, acquiring lots of engineers is a good idea, as you won't have to build as many workshops to get the required numbers for more satellite uplinks. For the moment, though, we can continue scanning. Commander, we're tracking several reported abductions via the Hologlobe. I've got the coordinates locked in. For the next set of alien abductions, three countries have been hit. Canada, South Africa and France. Canada would give a straight-up cash bonus, which is certainly useful, and could get us a nice head start on a few facilities we need in month two. South Africa would reward us with a sergeant-level support soldier, definitely a useful addition as well, although at least so far our support Emilia Solberg has been doing a fine job herself. Lastly then, France would send over even more engineers and that sounds intriguing as well, however we can't make our decision purely based on rewards, we also have to take panic levels into account, so let's quickly jump over to the situation room. And here we can see why it's probably best to go with France, as Europe already has a decent level of panic. And while keeping panic contained to one single continent seems like a good idea, it will come back to haunt us in the next month, as we could have multiple countries panic from one and the same abduction, forcing us to deploy multiple satellites to keep them in the XCOM project. Realistically though, we will only be able to launch three satellites in the next month, and by potentially committing several of them to Europe, chances are high we'll lose countries elsewhere. On top of that, the engineer reward from France is actually quite useful, because combined with the four engineers from the scope request, we are guaranteed to be able to build the next satellite uplink without having to construct another workshop first. So that is why we're picking France, a very difficult abduction mission, but the other two would have been as well. Our squad once again remains unchanged as we send Adam Work, Emilia Solberg, Roselius Wargel and Andrea Cook out into the field. However, with the officer training school unlocked now, we can also see that we could field up to six soldiers if we construct that facility and buy the respective squad size upgrades. Touching down. For now though, four has to be enough, so let's see what they can find. Copy that, Big Sky. Strike one is cleared to engage hostile targets. Watch your backs out there, people. Our objectives are the same as always. We need to kill all aliens and ideally collect both melt containers on the map. Thanks to her new sprinter ability, Emilia has by far the widest range of movement now and we will use that to get her into heavy cover and scout the battlefield. And she immediately reveals the first group of sectoids who have now scattered and run out of sight. And this allows us to move everyone else into cover as well and set up a few overwatches. Emilia and the first sectoid then trade shots, but no one can hit the other. Sniper Wargal is a bit more successful with his pistol, but the mind-merged alien on his side is also still standing. Luckily though, its shot misses as well. To make matters even worse, we have another nest reveal itself on the left flank, where Assault Adam Work is keeping watch, and even though his pistol shot connects, it doesn't do much damage. The aliens on that side also trigger a reaction shot from Andrea, but as you can see, the long range isn't doing her any favors. Emilia then notices the first melt canister right between the alien groups, but getting to it could be a rather tricky endeavor. And situations like these call for 
bigger measures, and since none of the aliens on the left are mind merged, they all have exactly 4 hit points, just enough to kill them with Andrea's shredder rocket. Now the third sectoid is actually nowhere to be seen here, but we saw it hide against the car in the back and as you can see, the rocket is just barely able to hit that car, but that's enough to cause it to detonate immediately and take the enemy with it. So triple kill for Andrea, the right flank is cleared, but we still have three more sectoids to deal with. Now Adam is pretty far away, but he also has a few defensive upgrades, so he will be the one dashing into half cover to flank the mind merge sectoid. His critical is enough to get the kill, while both Emilia and Roselius put some pressure on the alien in half cover, as they move into full cover themselves and go on overwatch, because our chances to hit are not fantastic. The sectoid does the only sensible thing it can do and that's taking the shot, however her cover is enough to keep Emilia safe. She also notices the second melt container somewhere further in the back, but with three turns still left on the first one we should not need to hurry. Now taking all options into account, we have a more or less guaranteed kill against the sectoid in half cover, but the other one is hiding behind the pickup truck, possibly on overwatch. You can actually see that here as it blocks a square where we can't dash to. So we will now ignore the first alien for the moment and get into a flanking position with Emilia. Another shot, another critical, that leaves only one more enemy. We'll start things off with a grenade from Adam, which of course won't kill the sectoid, but remove its cover and get it down to one hit point. We then move up Andrea, who could take the flanking shot, but Resilius needs to kill a bit more, so let's have him climb up to the truck and shoot down with his pistol. The high ground gives him a 20% aim bonus and with a 98% chance to kill, I would say let's take the shot. And that's it, sectoid number 6 goes down, Andrea can reload and we can end the turn. No more aliens in sight, so we'll use Emilia to grab the melt, while Sniper Wargall moves to the front of the truck for a better view. Again though, things look quiet, so we can risk a small dash with Adam to get him into heavy cover and closer to the second melt container. Fully reloaded, Andrea can also dash into heavy cover, while Emilia reloads her assault rifle and Resilius goes on overwatch. Nothing to report though, so we'll inch a bit closer with Adam and since he does not spot anyone, we can move up with Andrea and Emilia as well, while Resilius remains on overwatch. On the alien's turn we hear movement from the left, but we don't see anyone, so let's get the meld now before more hostiles show up. Copy that. In hand, Commander. Heavy Andrea then moves into full cover and reveals the third group of aliens. Since this is a very difficult mission though, we still have one more group left somewhere in the shadows. That is also why I don't want to move Emilia to the other side of the box, as she might reveal that group and put us in a very tight spot. So instead she goes on overwatch right where she is, the same is true for Mr. Wargall on the truck, while Adam is a bit exposed and can seek better cover on the back of the truck in front of him. Heavy Cook also goes on overwatch and now we wait for the aliens to do their thing. One of them runs through the overwatches of Andrea and Rosilius, but our sniper is a little too late as Andrea already lands the killing blow. As I had feared, the fourth and final group of sectoids then appears from the left side and all of a sudden we once again have a rather large group of enemies against us, luckily though no one else takes a shot for the moment. And that gives us a nice opportunity to catch the sectoids off guard by moving Adam further to the front of the truck and up to an elevated position. From here he all of a sudden has an excellent view and very good shots against all five remaining aliens and even better he has a flanking shot against the mind merging one, so let's take that and go for the double kill. Two down, three more to go, time for one more rocket. This one will take out two more sectoids as well as the front of the truck, but since Adam is behind cover and in the back, he won't get hurt. 
The last sectoid is now the perfect victim for Resilius Wargal and his squad side ability, because even though he's far, far away from the action, he has a clear line of fire and, thanks to the high ground, a 90% chance to hit. Another day, another successful operation. And that's it, mission complete, another abduction prevented, and everyone is still alive. I can't say I've ever seen an operation go that smoothly. Excellent work, Commander. Back in the base, we have three more promotions to take care of. Unfortunately, Emilia did not receive one, so we'll have to be careful that she does not fall behind too much. But for now, let's get some new abilities, starting with Sniper Resilius Wargal. I already talked about Gunslinger and Damn Good Ground in the last episode, and once again, we'll go with Damn Good Ground here. I promise we'll get a pistol-wielding gunslinger sniper eventually, but this ability simply works very nicely with squad side. You saw a prime example of that just a few seconds ago. Up next, we have Assault Adam Work, who can choose between Lightning Reflexes, which forces the first reaction shot each turn against him to miss, and Close and Personal, which gives Adam a free bonus shot if he's within four towers of an opponent. Both options are solid choices, but we'll go with Lightning Reflexes. Adam is slowly turning into a bit of a defensive specialist who can still deal a good amount of damage, and this ability now allows him to break enemy overwatches without getting hit, which can be very useful against aliens who use this ability often, such as Thin Man, for example. Finally then, time for Andrea, who becomes our first lieutenant. Her choices are Heat Ammo for a 50% damage bonus against robotic enemies, or Rapid Reaction, which grants a second reaction shot on Overwatch if the first one connects. And that Rapid Reaction is great if paired up with a few other abilities, but since we already passed up on most of those, it makes little sense, so we'll go with Heat Ammo instead. The damage bonus here applies to rockets as well, so once the first robotic enemies show up, Andrea will play a crucial role in our strategy. And that's it, we can now take a quick look at our loot, but we did not obtain anything unusual. As a result of completing this mission, we obtained four more engineers and a panic reduction in France, while panic in Africa and North America increases. We will be in touch, Commander. To get a better picture of the situation, let's quickly jump over to the situation room again, where we can now see that panic is fairly evenly distributed. Four countries are at the maximum level, so those four will be receiving satellites at the end of the month, otherwise they will leave the XCOM project. And with no other country higher than three, we can safely take on any abduction mission we want next time, and don't have to worry about additional countries panicking, apart of course from the ones that get hit. Now while we're here, we can also quickly stop by the grey market and sell a few sectoid corpses until our total funds exceed 80 credits. You will see why I'm doing this in just a moment. For now, though, we can return to Mission Control and continue scanning. Right, it is now the 28th of March, and we can pause again and pay our very first visit to the hangar. The hangar is where we can dispatch interceptors to all five continents. At the moment, we only have two in Africa, but since we'll soon have satellites on other continents as well, we also need to deploy a few interceptors to actually take on the UFOs that our satellites reveal. Without fighters, the satellites won't be all that useful, so let's make sure we have at least one in North and South America, as well as in Europe. For the moment, we can save money by transferring one of our existing ones, so we only need to spend 80 more credits for the remaining two, which take three days to build. Yes, these interceptors are not cheap, but they're well worth the investment. If I'm not mistaken, you also don't need to buy them this early. At the beginning of the next month would have been fine as well, but let's get this out of the way now so we don't have to worry about it later. And with that taken care of as well, it is once again time to continue scanning. Commander, our satellite is prepped and standing by for launch. We are ready to deploy it on your orders. Alright, all four of our satellites have just been completed, so we can deploy those in just a moment, because the construction of our new satellite uplink is also finished. Satellite uplink complete. 
right, with that satellite uplink completed, we now have the capacity for up to five satellites. One is already up above our base in Nigeria, and the other four will follow right now. And we'll give one to every country with a panic level of five, beginning in Canada, where the satellite will secure us a monthly funding of 180 credits, as well as one scientist. Satellite launched. Launching this first satellite also locks the eye in the sky achievement, and panic also decreases by two points. Let's do the same in Argentina, from where we will get 70 credits per month and another scientist as well. South Africa then gives us 80 credits, and because it's already the second country in Africa with satellite coverage, the personnel bonus increases from one engineer to one engineer and one scientist. Our last satellite then goes up above Germany, which grants us an additional 100 credits and once again another scientist. Satellite uplink facilities at maximum capacity. Additional uplink required. And that's it, we have a very even panic distribution at the moment and 5 of the 16 countries already covered. Nothing to report at the moment. Boards are clear. As a result, our monthly funding jumps up from 29 to almost 500 credits, which we will also receive in just a moment, as we have the final event of this month approaching, it is time for our very first council report. We are extremely impressed with the progress of the XCOM project thus far, Commander. Your recent results were beyond our expectations, and that is not a statement this Council makes lightly. And things could not look any better. We finished the month with a straight A, the best grade possible. All 16 countries are still part of the XCOM project. We have successfully completed all missions in this month without losing a single soldier. And for our efforts, we now receive our monthly funding, as well as four new scientists and one more engineer. Remember, we will be watching. And with that, we have officially wrapped up the first month and are now in April. Things will get a bit harder from here on out, but let's not worry about that right now. Since we have a decent amount of money, we can quickly take care of that council request and head over to engineering to purchase two scopes. The new engineers arrived this morning, Commander. We're always glad to have more help down here. Our engineer numbers are now up to 19 already. We only need 20 for the next satellite uplink, so fulfilling this request will allow us to build that without having to construct another workshop. And thanks to the increased number of engineers, scopes now also only cost 12 credits instead of 13. From what little I've seen of their technology, if the aliens were intent on conquering Earth, there's not much we could do to stop them. I'm guessing they have something else in mind. And now we can quickly head back over to the Situation Room. We have all the items that Russia is asking for, so with 9 days still left on the clock, let's fulfill that request and obtain ourselves 4 more engineers. Wonderful, that unlocks the Happy to Oblige achievement as we fulfill our first council request, but I'm sure many more will follow. One last thing now before we wrap up the episode, we have to construct a new facility, or two for that matter. If we have a look at our base, you can see in the top right corner that we have reached our power limit. At the same time, we do of course want to continue building new facilities, including a second access lift to gain access to the second level of our base. However, that access lift, as well as all new facilities, will cost power. The lift will run at only 2, but a new satellite uplink, for example, will cost 5. We can increase our power supply by building generators. However, they only produce 6 units of power each. So for the lift and the uplink alone, we would already need 2, so let's order both of those right now. They take 5 days to build, the access lift will take another 5, excavating the spot for the third satellite uplink will take another 5, and the uplink itself then takes 14, so starting early is almost a requirement if we want to be able to launch the satellites before the end of the month. And I would say that's it for today's episode. We have successfully completed our very first month in XCOM Enemy Within, and so far things are going very well. We'll see if that continues to be the case in the upcoming month. For today, however, we'll make the cut right here. As always, I hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, then I would be happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you want to support me and my channel further, then feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Alternatively, you can also support the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.